So again, let's recall function is a rule that assigns numbers as inputs and assigns each input to exactly one number as an output. So you have an input assigned to an output. We saw that input is independent variable and output is dependent variable. Let's do some examples then. So this first example, we have a 20% tip on a meal is a function of the cost in dollars of the meal. So what is the input? What is the output? Can you write a formula for a function where we may have to say some variables for each of the input and output? Let B stand for price of the meal in dollars and let t be tip in dollars. So go ahead, pause the video here and see what you can do with these two problems. Go ahead. Don't forget, little discomfort is perfectly OK, but I want you to try, even if it's wrong. And then we will discuss it together and see if you understood what input, output, and how to get the formula. Go ahead. You can do it. Don't wait for me. All right, here we go. Let's talk about it together then. So we have input, which is the variable B, which stands for price of the meal or amount of the bill in dollars. And T is the output, which is the amount of tip in dollars. So 20% as a decimal is 0.2. So our Tip T is going to be 0.2 times B. B is the amount of dollars that the meal cost. So 0.2 times B. So T equals 0.2 times B is our formula. T is the dependent variable, and B is the independent variable. So Sometimes in mathematics, just having a function in equation form is not enough. And so we create a new notation, which is f of b equals 0.2b. It's the same equation, but written in a different form. It's very important you learn how to read this new notation. Mathematics is all about creating a language. And so in the language, you have words. So f of b is a sentence. What does it mean? b is the input for which the output is given by point to b. That's what the meaning of this function is. So how do you read it? You read it as f of b. I know some of you asked about why can't we read that as f times b? Because we are making new notation, the context will tell you whether it's times or whether f is the name of the function, and you are using it as a placeholder for the output, and b is the input. So f of b equals 0.2b. So remember, it is not f times b. It's not that. It's only f of b. It's important how you read and write will dictate how your mathematical processing occurs. So f of 10 will be 0.2 times 10, or $2. You can see why b is 10. What that means is that your meal costs $10, and you would pay $2 tip. That would be 20% tip. So f of 10 is $2. All right, so what does that mean? Our input is what goes inside a function so in this case, b was our input or independent variable. And what came out was output or dependent variable. So when you're evaluating a function, you have to figure out what is the input and all the places that the input has to go into to get our output. So for example, if I asked you to compute f of 20, 20 is now my input. So it's actually $20, which means my bill was $20. What would be the tip? 
Why don't you do it for a second? Go ahead. Good. Same principle as above. So 0.2 times 20, which would give you 4. So output tip of $4. Input of $20 produced output of $4. All right, go ahead. Try F of 48 and tell us what it means in your own words, in English sentence. Go ahead. Again, don't wait for me. I can see that you are just waiting for me to give you an answer. Don't do that. Come on, let's go. All right, very good. 0.2 times 48 or 9.6. It means that the bill was $48 and that you had to tip $9.60. That is the meaning of F of 48 equals $9.6. When you collect all the inputs, we call that domain of the function. Domain is set of all inputs, and range of a function is set of all outputs. We will work more thoroughly on domain and range a little bit later. So algebraic representation of a function can take a form as an equation, like we saw before, t equals 0.2b, or as function notation, f of b equals t. It's important to cultivate understanding of what each of the component in the function notation represents. That first part here, f, is the name of the function. You can use a letter, you can use a word for name of a function. The b is the input or independent variable, and the output, the result, the t, is the output or f of b, the whole thing, when you evaluate it, is going to give you the output or the dependent variable. In this case, the t is dependent variable. So let's rehearse again what these things are. f is the name of the function, b is, represents input or the independent variable, and t represents output or dependent variable. Let's do a couple more examples to see if you understand we did a 20% tip, so now 30% tip, but now they want you to use P for price of the meal, and tip is the name of the function. So go ahead and do the same problem that we did with 20%, now with 30%. Go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. Assuming you've come back, let's take a look. P is my input or my independent variable tip of P. That's how I would read this. Tip of P is the amount of the tip in dollars, or that's my output. 30%, so that means 30 over 100, or 0.3 times P. What if you were given R percent tip on a meal, so they don't give you any particular number. The R stands for percent tip, P is the price, T stands for tip in dollars. So our tip is F of P equals R over 100 times P. So if you look, when I say F of P, there's only one variable P that the function is depending on. So that P is the independent variable. Any other letter you see is going to be considered as a constant. Constant means it does not change. So if you want to leave R percent tip, then R over 100 times P. P is the bill that you are going to have to pay. So R is a constant, but P is the variable or the input variable or independent variable. And T is still the output, which is the dependent variable. 